Short Stories of Dan Dan the Art Man, Episode 14, A Dark Climb. <laughs> There is a legend in my town about the old water tower that sits behind the Chesterton Mansion on the West Hill. The house is now on the National Register of Historic Places and is home to weddings and social events. It is also home to a dark story about an adventurous little boy who snuck out of the mansion Halloween night and climbed to the top of the tower to eat all of his candy. The story goes that he sat on top of that tower and ate and ate until all of his candy was gone. Then he fell asleep. In the night, he rolled over and fell off the tower to his death. It is said that if you climb the tower on Halloween night, you can see his mother on the back balcony of the mansion looking for him. What they don't tell you is, he is up there too, and he doesn't want to share his candy. We just moved here in early October. If you're a military brat like me, you probably already guessed why. Yep, my dad's a serviceman. It's a small town, but they have an Air Force base that needed an aircraft mechanic, so that's where the military moved us. My mom was in the Air Force, too. That's where they met. But she was killed while deployed in Afghanistan on her second tour of duty. So it's just Dad and me. We get along all right. I get good grades, don't get into too much trouble, and he trusts me enough to let me stay out with friends. I think it's because he feels guilty about moving me and making me find new friends. I make friends easily, though. I'm in school all day, so I'm always surrounded by a bunch of other guys my age having to deal with the same stuff. It doesn't take long to find people to hang out with. I would love to stay in one town, but after this Halloween night, I want to move away as soon as possible. This time... I wish I would have been a loner. Some guys I met through my English class invited me out Halloween night. We were all too old for trick-or-treating, so they had something else in mind. You guessed it. Make the new guy climb the creepy tower. So, there I was, staring up at a cold metal ladder that reached way farther up than I wanted to climb. Come on, man. Yeah, let's go, new guy. He has a name. Yeah, yeah, I'm just joking, man. But seriously, when you get up there, tell us if she looks like Miss Havisham in that book we're reading for class. Yeah, dude, we've all got great expectations for you, so get up there. Everyone got into it, so I started to climb. The black rungs on the ladder were cold and slick. I'm not really afraid of heights, but the idea of falling to my death didn't exactly thrill me either. As I got ascending, the wind started to pick up and I felt it pushing me sideways just a little bit. But it was enough to scare me, though. I stopped climbing. Dude, what gives? You're not to the top yet, man. Keep going. I almost looked down, but thought better of it. I didn't know these guys well. I didn't want to chicken out in front of them, though. I had to make it to the top. I lifted my hand and grabbed the next rung. I closed my eyes and blocked out the jeering below me. Then I started climbing again. My hands started to go numb. I kept climbing. The wind was getting stronger, and one time my left foot slipped. I kept climbing. I just focused on going up and tried to make the rest of the world disappear. Then my hand reached the top. I slowed down and looked over the top, then climbed all the way on. There was a ton of graffiti. I was surprised to see some of it. 
was paintings of candy. So, the legend was known by more than the kids I was with. It was a good story, but I had my doubts about it. I wouldn't have been surprised if they made it up just to scare me. Unfortunately, the story was all too true. Dude, what are you doing up there? Do you see the lady? There's a bunch of graffiti up here. Yeah, all the candy and stuff. Yeah, I thought you guys made that up. No, man. The story of the tower has been around for years. Even my dad heard about it when he was a kid. I looked toward the mansion at the balcony. I didn't see anything. All the lights were off inside, so it was really dark, and I only knew where the balcony was from my friends pointing it out before the sun went down. I didn't see anything. Then, I heard a rustling sound. I thought the wind had blown a bag or something up onto the tower, and it had been caught on something. I kept my body facing toward the mansion, but turned my head to see what was making the rustling sound. On the top of the tower with me, not three feet away, sat a pudgy, pasty little boy rustling through a bag of candy. And I could see through him. I could see all of his features, too. I could see the chocolate smeared down his chin and the half-eaten gumdrops stuck to his shirt. He found a lollipop and began to unwrap it. I was frozen in fear. I couldn't move. I didn't want to move. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I didn't want the fat chocolate smeared ghost boy to see me, so I held absolutely still. I had stopped breathing, and when my body forced me to breathe again, I coughed. The boy looked up, startled. He clutched his candy bag close, and his expression changed to anger. His fuzzy, diaphanous little eyebrows slumped down. I'm not sharing my candy with you, and you can't take it away from me. Everything I knew shifted. My insides felt twisted, and I started to shake. What my eyes were showing me, I knew could not be true. Get away from me. This is my candy. The boy put his bag down and stood up. I stretched out my hands toward him, trying to keep him away. I tried to speak. Maybe I could convince him that I didn't want his candy. I didn't want anything to do with him. I didn't want him to exist because he made my brain hurt and everything I believe melt away in a sea of fear. Stay away from my candy, he said, taking a step towards me. It was more than I could handle. I finally broke my eyes away from him and looked around for any way to escape. Now that I've had time to think of it, I wonder why I didn't just run through him to get to the ladder. But in the moment, I was way too scared. I saw a thick, long tree branch jutting out towards me like a mighty arm, calling for me to jump to it and accept its helping hand to safety. I looked back at the boy, and my fright was renewed. I bolted. I ran to the edge of the tower and launched myself to the tree branch. I grabbed on, and it bent under my weight. I fell until it reached its limit, and I bounced back up. Then, on the way down again, I heard a snap. I was falling. My stomach felt like it did on the drop of a roller coaster, and that's the last thing I remember from that night. I wish I could have hit my head hard enough on the way down to forget all about it, but I can't. The image of that boy is something I fear I will never be able to get rid of. I still have dreams of him coming towards me, telling me I can't have his candy, and then the fall. I always wake up when I hit the ground. I got to skip school for a few days while I recovered in the hospital, and I was glad for that. I didn't want to face my friends. I was mad at them for making me go up to that tower. A couple of them visited me, but I don't think it was out of kindness. I think they just had to know why I randomly jumped off the tower. 
they never saw a thing. They said they saw me stop and stare at something, and they all called to me, but I never heard them. That's never happened to me before, where I've been so scared, I can't even hear people calling to me. I hope my dad gets moved again soon. I hope I never see that tower again. I hope I can stop dreaming of the fat kid whose bulging belly I can see right through. I know I am never going near that house or that tower ever again. The End Hey guys, thanks for listening to my Halloween short story. I haven't written one in a long time. Hope you enjoyed it. Pretty short, pretty simple, but uh, yeah, it's kind of fun to write a ghost story. I haven't written one of those before. You can find me at my website, dandantheartman.com. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at dandantheartman, Facebook, Google+, same thing. Hope you guys enjoyed the story. Hope you guys are enjoying my book reviews podcast. And I uh, hope that I write and podcast another short story very soon. Um, I have been recording myself reading my short stories. They're ones that I already have recorded a long time ago. Since then, I've narrated about 16 audiobooks. So I've got some better chops for narrating stories. And uh, I am narrating stories again also because I have a brand new Well, now I've had it for a couple years, but a really nice microphone. It's what I'm recording on right now. So um, I am going to re-record all my stories and then put them all up as an anthology on patio books. All of the stories are actually now available at Smashwords and on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com and Nook and Kobo and all those great places. And it's called Danthology because it's an anthology, which is just a collection of short stories, all of which have been written by me. So go check that out. If you're curious, uh, you can also hear all the stories now in this podcast feed, but I'll be releasing them soon, one by one, on this podcast feed again with uh, better audio quality and a new reading. And then I'll put them all together and put them on patiobooks.com. Uh, it's been my dream to get on patio books for a long time. And I cannot wait to do it. Hopefully I'll eventually do it with a novel. But until then, I've got a bunch of short stories I'm really proud of, and they'll be coming your way soon. Thank you guys so much for listening. Have a safe and happy Halloween. I'm Dan Dan the Art Man, signing off. Have a good one. This podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative Works License. That means you can't sell it, but you can share it all you like. Just don't change it and attribute me as the creator. Sound effects were from the Free Sound Project at freesound.org. The music used in this podcast was Tempting Fate and Beginning by Audionautics.com. Thanks for listening. Ha 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 